Everyone, welcome to St. Paul's. Welcome to the season of Lent, and welcome to the 2023 Lenten Lunch and Speaker Series. My name is Charlie Dupree, and I am the rector of St. Paul's. For those who are here for the first time, welcome. And for those who are returning, welcome back. Please join me in a short prayer. O God, the world is alive with your goodness. It grows green from the ground and ripens into the roundness of fruit. Its taste and its touch enliven our bodies and stirs our souls. Generously given, profusely displayed, Your graces of goodness pour forth from the earth as we have received. So free are we to give. As we have been granted, so may we give. Amen. I arrived in August of 2019 which landed me here in Richmond and at St. Paul's exactly five months before my first Lent and the beginning of a pandemic. Since then, the Lenten series has taken some twists and some turns. I remember my first year, we focused on interfaith conversations about leaning into love and loving our neighbor It was midway through that series that the pandemic closed things down. The next year, we had to move online. We focused on poets and artists like Hamilton Glass. Last year, we welcomed celebrated author Sadiqa Johnson, and we traveled with her through the novel Yellow Wife. I'll never forget the stories that happened in our own neighborhoods including Lumpkin's Jail. Last year, as a part of our journey toward racial healing, we commissioned the Stations of St. Paul's, which are on your right and your left, and they are there to accompany us through our season of Lent, a season of truth-telling. Janelle Washington, the artist who created these beautiful and powerful images, has since won many awards including the Coretta Scott King John Steptoe Award for New Talent. You're invited to pray these stations and walk them throughout the season of Lent. But through it all, the Lenten Lunch and Speaker Series, in person or online, maintains its common threads to cultivate a loving community, to create spaces in which we think about our lives as spiritual human beings, that share responsibility for one another, and to provide a tasty meal and offer hospitality. Which brings me to our topic for the 2023 Lenten season, Around the Table, a spirituality of cooking, eating, hospitality, and hanging out. For centuries, communities and civilizations have been shaped around food, What happens when we eat together? Why do we make such a big deal of it? Why are so many of our sacred texts about a spirit of welcome and hospitality? Is there something holy that happens when we gather around the table? I think so. So for the next five weeks, we're going to spend time talking to local artists, chefs, entrepreneurs, who have dedicated their lives to the food and beverage industry. And while I'm sure that that industry is fun, and I pray it's lucrative, I also believe there's something deeper going on when people gather to cook, grow, eat, and drink. So together, you and I are going to scratch the surface and see what happens when we take those who are usually in the kitchen behind the scenes and put them front and center. We begin with Kea Wingfield. Kea is a baker, a chef, a recipe creator, food photographer, amongst many other things. 
She says that her roots are Indian, but her training is Virginian. And this unique situation has equipped her with a priceless perspective on food. Food is Kea's love language, and she puts her heart into everything she creates. Please help me welcome Kea. Okay. All right, microphone Hi. adjustment. We I think good? we're good. Yeah, are we good? Yeah. Oh, okay. You can hear me? All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just keep that up there close. Okay. Cool. Good. Hi. Kaya, welcome. We're so Thank glad you. you're here. We have been talking about this since, I guess, November mm -hmm. when we began to pull all of these fantastic people together, and you are, you are at the top. Must invite Kaya. Thank you. So um, let's begin. I'd, I'd like to hear about your journey. Tell me about your story uh, from India to Richmond. Yep, yep. So Not a particular common no, path, right? Not something you see often. Tell no, us about it. No. But first, I want to thank everybody for being here. I really appreciate your time, and thanks for inviting me. I'm so honored. Um, my journey to here. So quick backstory. I used to work. Um, I was born and raised in Bombay in India, and I used to work for a company called Circuit City. Do you remember that? Circuit City. Circuit City, okay. Um, I worked in Bombay, and there was a guy named David who worked at Circuit City in Richmond. And we met online through work, and ended up marrying him and came to Richmond. I know, don't do that. So <laughs> I don't recommend it. No, no, it's, um, it's, um, that's, that's what brought me to Richmond. I wanted to move here to be with him. We got married, and we've been married for a very long time now. I can't tell you the number. It's too long. All right. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so I mean, did you, is this working? Microphone three, OK. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm switching it up here. All right. Um, so how, I mean, you, you met him. How did you meet him? So we, we, were, we were both working on the same project okay. for Circuit City. So we met on the intranet of Circuit City. And really, I wasn't talking to him. I was talking to his boss, because I was in charge of working with him. But he would keep interjecting. I'm like, who is this guy? Like, what do you want? Um, that's how we met. Okay. And then he came to India. He met my parents. We got engaged in India. We got married here in Mechanicsville in Church of Redeemer. Okay, so tell us about um, cooking in India. Where, where did your love of food come from? Um, so I was a useless teenager. I did nothing. I didn't pay attention to anything. I had no ambition. Uh, but luckily for me, my mother was a fantastic cook. Um, and I got this from her, and, and that's my inheritance from her. So that's, I, I, never paid atten I never asked her questions or you know, hung out in the kitchen. I was just always just kind of not paying attention. But anyway, this is a gift I got from her, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so was, I mean, the, the spices, the smells, the colors, was that all a part of your life growing up? Oh, yeah. And you know, the thing is that it's so rich uh, in experience, and it is such a sensory experience. But when you're in it, you don't pay attention to it, right? Because you're so covered, you, you're just enveloped by it. But when I moved here, I realized what I was missing. Um, and that's kind of when those roots sort of traveled back to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you land in Richmond. Mm -hmm. um, had you been in any way uh, put in front of Southern culture? No. Or Southern food? Nope. I was very confused. Okay. <laughs> Talk about that. <laughs> um, like simpler terminology, um, lady finger. Do you know what that's called? A lady finger. Yeah. It's called an okra. Okay. I learned that the hard way um, because I had tiramisu for the first time. And they told me there is a lady fingers in here. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I don't see any green in here at all. So there was a lot of that kind of cultural confusion in the beginning. Um, I, I just didn't get the concept of peanut butter for some reason. I'm like, what is peanut butter? What do you mean? Um, so a lot of food confusion in the beginning. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And then um, you, you studied in a culinary teaching setting, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you later went to teach 
Mm-hmm. What what led you to formalize your um, this this interest? Um, I'll tell you. You know, sometimes you get really lucky and you end up answering the calling in your life, and that's it. Was just meant to be this way for me. Um, I never thought I would be in the food business. I never thought I would be a chef. Um, but I come from a family that has a huge sweet tooth. Huge, like we put sugar in everything. So I was always interested in baking or learning about baking. But here's a caveat, in India we don't use ovens. So I had never even seen an oven until I moved here. Huh. I'm like, what is an oven? Um, so then when I moved here, my fiance, now husband at the time, had an oven in his apartment. And I was so curious and I started to bake. I would just make really weird things and that's how that interest developed. Um, And then to his credit, he saw uh, um, a job opening at a local bakery for like front of the house person. He's like, hey, you should go get this job. I'm like, no, I I, I don't, I don't, I can't go there. He's like, no, no, go go do it, you never know. So I did, and then two weeks later, they put me in the kitchen to work. They're like, no, no, you can't be in the front, you need to come in the back. Okay. Um, And that's how this journey started. All right. So talk about baking, the Mm -hmm. difference between like, Baking is very specific, right? Extremely. And would you, is that your primary thing you'd say? I'm a baker, yep. I'm You're a pastry a, chef. A pastry chef, Correct. okay. Yeah. Um, tell, tell us about how th- that evolved. If you didn't have an yeah. oven, and now you do. I know. I, I like mean, cupcakes. Yep. All of it. Cookies. Yeah. How did Eyes. that all shake um, down? I just taught myself. For the first few years, I would just look up a recipe for a pie, and then I would make 15 pies, just to kind of get the idea of what it, what it is and what it feels like and how it's made. And the first time when something baked up in the oven, I think I lost my mind. I'm like, this is a real thing? Like, I had no idea. Um, so I taught myself. Then when I got that job, I learned a lot on the job. And then I signed up for the uh, pastry arts program at Reynolds College. Um, so I used to work from... 1 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then go to school from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and this was my life every day. Uh, that, that went on for two years. Um, wow. Once I graduated, um, a month after I graduated, they called me, they're like, do you want to come teach here? I'm like, do you have the wrong number? Uh, I was like, what? So, so I started teaching the whole program. At the same time, my business started kind of on accident. So it, everything just kind of started at once in 2010. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, now you've started a new business. Yes. T- talk, it's called Snack? So, um, okay, so in the pandemic, um, the dessert business just kind of went away, right? I mean, the world stopped. Um, all, the, all our big corporate clients uh, fell off. And overnight, I was left to figure out what I'm gonna do with, with my business. How am I gonna keep my employees? How, how are they going to feed their families? So we pivoted to making modern Indian to-go foods. Um, and with those foods, I would send little bags of masala spiced potato chips. So masala is an Indian spice blend. Um, and it was just a thank you to my clients for, like, let, for letting me pivot this way. <clears throat> and eventually, like not too long after that, they started to order the chips by themselves. And again, very confusing moment in my life. Um, So that's how those chips were born out of the pandemic. Um, And now we're at a point where we sell the chips retail everywhere in Richmond, and we're hoping to go national with them. Well, all right. Yeah. Um, Well, I want to ask, like, how do you mass produce food? But that's a completely different story, different thing. We'll need a lot more time for that. All right. Let's talk about the Food Network. Okay, let's try all right, how did that happen? You were on in 2021, mm-hmm. season seven. Mm-hmm. Um, it was 10 weeks. How did that start? Was there like an audition? Did they find you? Did you find them? Tell us about that story. So um, they found me. They found me on Instagram. And I just got this random message from some producer saying, hey, do you want to come audition for something? And I thought it was spam because we get messages like that all the time. You know, it doesn't mean anything. But for some reason, I answered it. I'm like, sure, what do you have in mind? So that's how that started. Um, and then I did audition for the show. I went through a pretty rigorous um, hiring process for the cast. Um, 
And I'll never forget for my last interview was with a uh, with the food ex food network executive. Like he was the, the guy who was going to decide whether I'm on or not off. And at the end of the call, he pauses and he says, "Do you see yourself on this show?" And I don't know out of where. I swear, you guys, I don't know out of where came out of my mouth. I see myself winning. <laughs> and mic drop, and I left. <laughs> and he's like. Okay, so, <laughs> I, so that's how that happened. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah. And you, did you, you were on set away for 10 weeks, is for that right? For a month. Four months. I was in LA for a month. Um, I shot 10 episodes with them, and it was pretty rigorous. Okay, yeah. does it happen back to back, like multiple back -to -back. shows? Yeah, like back to back we shot. Um, we maybe got one day break in those 30 days. Uh, we would shoot one episode a day sometimes, one and a half episodes, just depending on how many people were on. Okay. Yeah. And is it as friendly and or as dramatic, those interpersonal you, relationships? You know we're in America, right? <laughs> this is not the British baking show. Like, they're, they're not <laughs> cute and sweet. Like, they're, <laughs> they're cutthroat. <laughs> Do you stay in no. touch with those folks? <laughs> no, I, I'm being mean. But it was, it was a really nice experience. I feel like uh, on day one, the producer who was managing the whole thing told me, he's like, here's the secret to winning this show. And they're like, you, this is a marathon. You know, this is resistance training. This is, let's see, how much can you persist? Okay. She's like, because if you make it to episode five, six, you're going to be so tired that you just give up out of being tired. And a lot of people fall off at that point. So she's like, this is an endurance test. Yeah. yeah. All right. And she was right. Well, that is a really cool thing. Yeah. Um, let's switch a little bit now, switch gears and talk about uh, spirituality. I have to ask, is this the strangest place you've ever given a talk about no. food before? No, I don't think so. What is? Um, let's see. I've talked in a basement. I've talked. I mean, I, I, don't, I wouldn't. Why? It's not a strange place. It's a beautiful place. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. It is a. It is a it's beautiful gorgeous. place. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just wondered. A, a lot of the people when I first gathered, they were like, "Oh, you're a church. Why are you talking about <laughs> this? Why are you talking about food?" No. Um, so talk about um, what. What do you think is happening when people gather to eat? What's the what do you want people to take away from having known you or experienced your art form? Um, food is such a personal experience, right? We each experience it in our own way. You could, you could all be eating the same thing, but you all have your own experience with it. So that is something that is ingrained in my mind from the very beginning. Because um, when, when I'm feeding people, I take it very seriously. To me, I want to create this community around it, um, so I want to make sure that I'm putting everything into it. Um, but you know, we always talk about how meaningful music is, and it sure is, but I feel like food goes a little bit above that, only because we all have to eat, right? We don't all have to listen to music, but food is a fundamental need, combined with art, combined with community, combined with love. So it has a more unifying property than anything else in the world, you know? Yeah, we all agree that we like food. Yeah. 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 It's a bringer together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is there a particular way that you prepare food or offer hospitality that you think is unique? A, a sure. unique spin on that? Yeah, I feel like I um, I always want to honor my culture and my roots. Right. I, I was born and raised in India, uh, but I got all my training in Virginia. So for me, those two cultures have always have to have front row seat in anything I make. Um, because so many before me have come and set the standard, and it's up to me to kind of keep rolling with that. So it's up to me to understand the Southern culture. It's up to me to continue bringing to light the Indian culture. Um, so as long as I'm doing that, I, I am good. Yeah. 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 Were you um, in India or when you, when you came to the United States involved in any sort of organized religion or religious practices of, of any type? Um, not really. My mother was a pretty devout Hindu. She would go to temple every day. And, uh, but my parents never, quote unquote, forced it on, on me or my brother. Um, so I may not be a very religious person, but I'm a very spiritual person. Mm -hmm. So to me, there's a higher power that I answer to. And... Uh, that's what helps me. 
Were there rituals in your household growing oh, up? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. It was off the chain. Okay. Like, my mom didn't do anything at, at a one. It was always a 10. So there was always, like, excess amount of Hindu culture, uh, prayers, uh, it, the whole thing. Okay. So, yeah. so religion yeah. was not foreign to you? Oh, gosh, no. Okay. No, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And do you bring any of that into your family and around your table? Sure. I, I, you know, I... I bring the religion of kindness into my house because my daughter, uh, I have a four-year-old daughter, her name is Uma, and she's a biracial kid, you know, her, uh, my husband is, um, he's Catholic and um, I am Hindu. So we, we try to teach her about both cultures, but above all, we teach her about kindness because as long as you can be a good person, anything else is manageable, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, another aspect of moving to the United States, to the South, as a woman, as a woman of color. Mm -hmm. I wonder if in this particular industry, um, I remember last year we talked to Sadiqa and Janelle about being a woman of color in the arts. Yeah. Um, and so as you've just defined what you do, your passion, your love, have you encountered any obstacles as a woman of color in this industry? About a million times. A million times. Yeah. Um, what does it look like? It, well, you know, I, here's the thing about, about I'm going to use a heavy word like racism, right? It's not racism, but I'm going to use that word to put it in context. I have never thought racism is on me. I feel like it's that person's perspective, and I don't take it personally by, by any stretch of the imagination. So the ways I've encountered it, my husband is Caucasian, he, he's white, um, and people would automatically assume that he's the owner. Like, mm. my landlord would send a letter in his name when we had meetings, and if he was there, People are making eye contact with him, but not looking at me. Like little things like that, and it never, 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 never bothered me. Uh, and, and it still doesn't. Um, I know what I'm, I can do. I know what I bring to the table. Um, but things like that, like if people walk into my studio, um, they think that I'm the help, and my assistant is the owner, so on and so forth. So there have been small instances like that, uh, but that's cool. Yeah. All good. Is it? Guess who's getting paid at the end of the day? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guess who won a Food Network show? Um, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, um, say you, you mentioned uh, your, your daughter and your family, and you said it was okay for us to talk about a, yeah. a son yeah. that, you, that you lost, mm -hmm. and that he's also a part of everything yes. that you do and everything that you put into your, your art. Mm -hmm. You want to say anything about that? Yeah, I, I always want to talk about him. Um, I never not, I'm sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cry. I never not want to talk about him. Um, so he was born in, uh, so go back a little bit. Um, Food Network, when I was doing Food Network, I was pregnant with him. So you guys, I was four and a half months pregnant running around a set. Um, it was not fun. Um, and then he was born in February of 2021. And we soon understood that he had a major genetic issue that he could not overcome. He spent two months in the NICU and then he passed away. Um, the, this chip company that I'm do, starting, that's in his name. Um, it, it's called Dutch Foods, Inc. Um, everything I do is to keep his presence alive in my life um, while making sure my daughter has everything she needs as well. So again, the food aspect comes into play. When he passed away, I would lock myself in the kitchen and cook something to just kind of shut the noise out or <clears throat> a way of coping, if you will. Um, I, I am working on a book that talks about grief and cooking and how that helps you and how that can help you. Um, but I would lock myself in the kitchen, I would channel my mom, I would think about my dad, and it would, that was my therapy. So as you can see, food has impacted me in every single way imaginable. And yeah. I feel like it does it to everybody um, to that extent. Yeah. yeah, so grief and cooking, Yeah. that is something I've never thought about before. Yeah. And it allows you, can you say just a little bit more about that? Yeah. I mean, the connection between those two I think, things? You know, we all have to take ownership of how we feel right? Sure, you can go see a therapist and you can go shop. Go shop. That's good, too. Um, but when you can take 
charge of your own feelings and kind of process them yourself and give yourself the tools to be able to deal with them, that's pretty powerful, right? And food can do that for you. So one of the, the first things I made after he passed was called a cardamom coping cake. And I can't tell you how therapeutic that was for me. It was only an hour in the kitchen. We made it, we ate it together. So it's that kind of experience that I want to bring to others because none of us is not, we're, we're not untouched, we're all touched by pain. We're all dealing with sadness and grief and I feel like in this country the mental health situation is pretty off the charts bad. Um, so if I can provide some tools on how you can take charge of your own mental health, mm -hmm. I think that'll be great. Okay, yeah. well, I'm sorry. Thank and, you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you could talk about some of your inspirations. You've mentioned your mother. Mm -hmm. uh, you've mentioned your family. Mm -hmm. Who, when you, this is what my husband does. His therapy is I leave the house, mm -hmm. he starts to cook, and then he watches cooking shows. <laughs> I love it. Him and Who I'm are the cooking shows so you put on? Yeah. Do you do you follow anybody? Do you like any 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 I people in particular? I can't watch cooking shows because I just want to yell at them the whole time. <laughs> it's like, what did you what did you add in there? Like, no, it's bad. <laughs> really? You like? <laughs> I you don't watch them. I get mad about things. Um, so no, I don't watch cooking shows. Um, but I don't know. What do so I? So who are some of your food heroes? Like, who? What recipe books, cookbooks do you have on your shelf? Um, oh my God, that's a loaded question. Um, there are a lot of couple of French pastry chefs that I'm a huge fan of who write technical books for schools. Like they're insanely talented. Um, there, um, there is Zoe Francois, who's a, she's not a French chef by any means. She's a very homebody kind of chef, but I really admire what she does. Um, there are a lot of local people I love, like Mark. Have, have you have you tried his bread? Mm -hmm. Like. Phew. Um, there's, there's a Sabrosa crew who I really look up to because what they do on a daily basis, that's not just food, that's practice. Um, and that's very serious. So, yeah. Okay, so pra the discipline of it's cooking. A it's not easy. Versus yeah. just, Correct. you know, going in and cooking, whatever. What do you think sure. of things like HelloFresh and all that? Um, what is that? Okay, no, enough I, said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I, I have used it once because my husband bought it for me. He's like, I want to help you out in the kitchen, so I'm going to buy you this kit. And I'm like, what is this crap? Now? But, uh, but no, he meant well. We used it. It was fun. <laughs> I feel like if I've chopped something, I've cooked. Yeah. So you sound like David. <laughs> That's what he says that if you have to, he's like microwaving is his extent of cooking. Like, that's cooking to him, like heating up something in the microwave. It's sad, you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to open it up to the audience for a couple of questions. I don't know if there is anybody out there who would like to ask a question. I will um, come to you and uh, hand you the mic. Anybody have a question? My question is, first of all, hi. 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 I miss you. Um, what is your favorite food that you have made that's an intersection of Virginia and India? Ooh, that's a good question. So I make this dish, and I haven't actually like posted it or talked about it yet, but I make these fried okra, and it's tossed in like a masala sauce. It's perhaps my favorite mishmash of the two, because fried okra is a revelation, like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's good, okay, you guys, please, yeah. Okay, I watched your season on the Spring Baking Thank Championship, you. and I was so excited when you won. Um, my question is, is there anything you would have perhaps done differently? Um, it seems like such a stressful, just watching, and I'm like, how in the world do these people do it? Yeah. But is there anything you would have made differently? I mean, obviously you won, so you did the right thing. You, you did Who enough knows? to win, yeah. but yeah. I was just curious. And sort of a second question, if I could. Last year, I purchased from you the Easter Pops, and my family loved them. Are you yeah. going to be making them available <laughs> again this year? So I squeezed in two questions. I love it. I love, that's, those are my favorite questions. Um, the only thing I feel like I would have done differently is I would have not dropped the cake 
that I spent three hours making because that was not fun. Um, but no, I, you know, I really um, stuck to my guns and I brought what I knew to the table and the judges appreciated a different point of view. I was putting some Indian stuff into the American stuff that, that they're like, oh, this is different. We've never seen this before. So I can't say, I, I usually am not a very, I don't live with regret, you know. I did what I did, I'm pretty proud of it. So no, I don't think it would change anything. And yes, call me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just wondered if there were, was an Indian restaurant in Richmond that you would oh, recommend. No. no, Margaret, you didn't ask me that. <laughs> My kitchen? <laughs> no. You can go to Leja in uh, Short Pump in the mall. It's great. There's a new place called Kismet on Broad where Perch used to be. They seem pretty wonderful. Yeah, those two I feel like are pretty good. Yeah. Hi, I wonder if you have found any common elements in Indian cuisine and Southern cuisine? Oh, that is a great question. Um, there may not be, you know, I, I'll tell you what, the word soul always comes to mind. Like Indian food is made with so much heart and I can say the exact same thing about Southern food uh, because people take it really seriously and that's how it is back at, back at home as well. So I feel like it has that common element of just the soul that's put into the food. Yeah, not necessarily the ingredients, but what, how they feel about it. Yeah, thanks. All right, maybe a couple of more questions. So is there a Virginia food you've introduced to India? Uh, wow, you guys are good. Uh, hmm, I don't think you deserve this, all this good stuff here, no. Do you ever call your mother and be like, hey, I've got a collard recipe? <laughs> She'd be like, what? So, um, unfortunately, both my parents have passed away, uh, but uh, when my, uh, this is a funny story, when my parents were here, you will never guess their favorite restaurant. Never in a million years. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Waffle House. <laughs> we went there every day. Uh, I'm like, what is wrong with the two of you? That, that's all they wanted was Waffle House. So, yes, they would introduce the Southern culture. Yeah. Um, I love cardamom. I like cardamom? The, I love cardamom. Oh, me too, girl. And I, I put it in my oatmeal. Nice. Um, but... I, when you said cardamom coping cake, I was like, what's that? Can you just talk a little bit more about yeah. that cake and how it helps you cope? For sure. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, uh, my handle is Co. And if you go back to a couple of a bunch of pictures, you'll see the picture of that cake. Um, I'm hoping that cake is going to be the cover of the book. Um, but it's, it's kind of like a really dense pound cake, if you will, um, that has tons of fresh cardamom coursing through it. Um, so to me, that, that actually is a perfect example of a very southern traditional pound cake that's got a lot of Indian cardamom kind of speckled in there. Um, and uh, that cake was born out of my need for just kind of my need to get away for, for a bit. Um, so it's one of the most therapeutic things I've done. Thank you. Thanks for asking that. Yeah. Um, final question. You yeah. said you were on billboards. Dude. Why? I, why? I know. That's my question, too. <laughs> why? Why would you put my face on there? So um, Reynolds, where I went to school, Yeah. It turns out they're really proud of me. Um, like, they're always talking about me. They're putting my, it's so annoying. They put my pictures up everywhere. Um, so, no, they, they, um, they're super proud of what I've done and, you know, I've helped them and they've helped me. And Dr. Panda, who is the first lady president of the school, who I met with, and she's gorgeous, by the way, um, had a great time with her. We made chai together. Um, so they're, they're just proud of me, and they put me up on billboards to promote the, 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 the new Reynolds Kitchens, uh, which you guys should see the building is state of the art. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. of course yeah. they're proud of you. We're all, we're all proud of you, you. and um, just so thankful. One of the um, reasons that we have gone down this path, in, in particular in, in this series, is to open up the way that um, 
there are so many blessings out in the world True. you that that's that's kind of the way god operates it's through Agreed. people like you Agreed. and you are a blessing and you have been a blessing and you can tell you. that you put blessing into everything that you do so thank you for being here please thank help you. me thank yeah. kaya yeah. thank you so much thank you, thank you. yeah um by the way i'm gonna um mention one last thing. Yes. Because I had, I had wanted to talk about her for the whole time and I didn't. But I wanted to talk about my mother-in-law. Um, she, um, she goes to Church of Redeemer. She's a devout Catholic herself. And I don't think I know anybody who's stronger than her. So I feel like if I stuck around, it's probably because of her. So you guys can thank her for that. Yeah. yeah. Is she yeah. here? No. Okay. All right. She's not feeling well, but, but I think uh. of her all the time, and I want people to know how wonderful she is. All right, yeah. well, yeah. whatever we can do to support yeah. you and your mission, um, just, just give us a call. All, all right, so just Thank a few you. things about uh, next week. We will be here next week. Uh, Lance Lemon, Kristen gardner Beal from Rich Wine RVA will be our speakers, so I do hope you'll come back and bring some friends and spread the word. You can spread the word on social media. Um, there's also um, opportunities if you wanted to make a contribution, uh, you can drop a contribution in the box back there, uh, and that will go to support our series. Uh, just remember that you need to place your orders for the lunches one week before, and there's a way that you can make place your orders today for next week and for the whole series if you'd like to go ahead and place your lunch orders. Um, but just know that that possibility is there. Um, and uh, Kristen, I guess, uh, I'm sorry, Kea, if you That's wanted Kristen. to, I was looking at Kristen, I told you. Kea, you if you wanted to hang out here and, <laughs> and greet folks, you're welcome to do that. Okay, I'll All right. Do that. So I'm gonna just conclude with a, with a blessing. Friends, remember that life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those with whom we share this journey. So make haste to love and be quick to be kind. And may the blessing of the Holy One rest upon you now and always. Amen. Amen. Have a good day, everybody. Kaya, thank you. No, thanks so much. <laughs> I don't mind Christian, though. It's a good name.